afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to uh, uh, express my thanks to Microlice for giving me this opportunity uh, to come along uh, this afternoon and talk to you about uh, DVSA's Earn Recognition Initiative. For DVSA, Earn Recognition is very much a recognition of exemplar operators whose compliance systems and standards already meet our high expectations of what constitutes an earned recognition operator. However, we also hope that earned recognition provides a sense of aspiration to those transport operations whose systems don't already meet what are quite stringent standards. Ultimately, earned recognition is part of an overall DVSA strategy to improve road safety by proportionate intervention. And what I mean by that really is a form of industry segmentation, allowing DVSA to categorise operations in terms of risk. By awarding earned re recognition to part of the industry, we can concentrate our valuable resources on those who pose the most danger to all of us as road users. However, we appreciate that we can't do this ourselves. The scrutiny of applications, initial and periodic audits, and continual manual processing would be a massive undertaking. This needs to be a collaborative approach where DVSA works together with operators, compliance systems providers, and external auditors to minimise the burden and maximise the benefits for us all. Okay, first of all, before I, I kick off any further, um, I'd like to pose a question for you all. A very simple question. And that is, do you think there's any benefit in applying for earned recognition? Option one, maybe in the future. Option two, yes. Option three, couldn't say. Or option four, no. Interesting, actually mirrors uh, some of the responses that we got from a, a survey we did earlier this year um, where we got unprecedented numbers of responses back from uh, a survey asking similar questions. Okay, so let's talk about systems and how these link with um, recognition. One of the many problems facing the most responsible transport operations is the vast array of data emanating from multiple compliance systems. Having multiple systems means the transport manager gets information from various sources, IT and paper based, driver's hours, maintenance suppliers, contractors, health and safety, HR, finance, etc, etc. In this situation, the transport manager needs to be very well organised and minimise to minimise the risk of non-compliance. Existing IT systems may not be able to cope with multiple feeds from different suppliers or new applications. We find this to be a particularly common problem with a wide range of available maintenance systems and smart driver applications. Transport managers can get bogged down with many different management reports, statistical analysis, emails, etc., etc. The transport manager sometimes can't get the right information at the right time. I'm sure this uh, caricature rings a bell with uh, at least some of you uh, in our careers where we've been faced with lots and lots of data and hardly any answers in which we're going to be able to deal with this data. So really what we're talking about is something that leads to poor performance and stress which in turn creates a risk to our transport operations overall compliance. Even the DAVSA, even DVSA can empathise. Some of our roadside enforcement tools aren't as integrated as they could be. When you look at our mobile compliance system, for example, that our examiners use at the roadside, they don't have any facility to access information 
on the validity of tachograph driver cars. So enforcement becomes much less effective than it could be because examiners become really frustrated. And this is just one of several enforcement processes that I'm happy to share with you that uh, we, we lack. But this, of course, is all part of continuous improvement, this recognition that we have issues, that we have gaps, that we need to, that we need to try and improve. So my point is that really a transport manager's world is no different. Multiple and disjointed data sources lead to frustration and increase the risk to compliance failure. So where am I getting to? This is all about working together. It's important that systems suppliers cooperate and cooperating functionality that allows operators' information to be shared. The transport manager needs all the systems to work together. This will organise the important information in one place, helping the transport manager to be effective, saving time, money and to operate safely. Integrated systems will also facilitate preparation for entry into DVSA's Earn Recognition Scheme. So, working together is about systems providers, transport operations and DVSA collaborating to ensure the best possible compliance outcomes, providing improved economic and road safety benefits. So Earn Recognition. What's it all about? This is a high level approach. The end recognition concept is a voluntary scheme where the holders of operator licenses can apply. But there are terms and conditions that the operator would need to meet when applying to join. On application, the operator would need to demonstrate that compliance levels required for the scheme are being met. These would be checked by DVSA during an application review. The review would look at the operator's compliance history and in particular whether the key performance indicators are being met and that there is no adverse disciplinary with the traffic commissioner within the last two years. Immediately following an application being accepted, the operator would need to obtain an independent compliance systems audit. And this would be to measure against the earned recognition standards. The audit would need to be carried out by a DVSA-approved DVSA audit provider. Following a successful audit, the operator would be accredited with earned recognition and move into what we call monitoring status. At this point, the operator's electronic systems for both drivers and maintenance would monitor KPI performance for both drivers uh, and maintenance. Unless the compliance performance subsided, the operator would remain in the operating status. Assuming there would be no need for any DVSA interventions with the scheme, the operator would, be, would provide a periodic audit every two years, again to the end recognition standards. If the operator failed to meet the KPI tolerance bands, then the operator would be an exception and probably working on an action plan to address the issues. A DVSA network business manager would be responsible for overseeing all, all stages of the cycle. If an operator failed to complete an agreed action plan or was in breach of the terms and conditions, then a scheme exit process would be instigated. However, uh, the operator and DVSA would explore all possible solutions to try and avoid this. Next, we can have a look, closer look at how the performance monitoring works. The operator systems will need to monitor DVSA set key performance indicators for driver activities and vehicle maintenance. The KPIs are based on the requirements of the operator's license and do not go beyond what we'd expect from an operator to already undertake. We have seen a dashboard approach that works particularly well, providing organised information to the transport manager, which can be effectively managed. 
The monitoring system will need to handle data feeds from driver's errors analysis and the maintenance system, which would come from several sources, such as in-house, third-party or dealerships. The performance indicator measurement is taken over a four-week period and reported four weeks in arrears to allow a complete set of data to be submitted. The operator's system will report automatically to DVSA that the KPIs are being monitored, but also of any exceptions where the KPIs have failed to be met. It's important to stress that at no point in this process would DVSA have any access to the operator's information. So, our delivery approach with this uh, project. So we're currently working through the pilot stage. We've already started to approve audit providers and validate compliance system providers. We'll also continue to assess and monitor in KPI performance. From a project governance perspective, we will also complete our business case for our directing board approval. We've already sparked interest of a number of operators with involvement in the pilot. Their assistance will allow us to test and validate our monitoring processes. Although their approved applications will not give them full earned recognition status during this phase, their participation will certainly facilitate a smooth path uh, for preparation for go live. The duration of the pilot is very much dependent on the support received from operators, support organisations and the development of systems. However, we envisage go live at some point in the autumn of this year. So, what will happen in go live? First of all, OCRS will be updated. DVSA will publish earned recognition lists, so operator, audit provider and validated systems providers. Changes to DVSA roadside process will be instigated. So where operators have end recognition, they will no longer be brought into um, roadside checks for enforcement purposes. And lastly, operators in the pilot will move, will move to an accredited status. So what I'm going to do now is pose that initial question again. See if there's any change in attitude uh, during that short presentation. So, do you think there's any benefit in applying for earned recognition? One, maybe in the future. Two, yes. Three, couldn't say. Four, no. Four, no. Okay, so a bit of an increase in the yeses, so that's interesting and, and quite a positive response as far as I'm concerned. So, good. I'm going to pose, before I leave you today, I'm going to pose a, a further question, which is quite crucial really in uh, determining how successful this is going to be. And that is, are your transport management systems ready for end recognition? So, are they ready for end recognition? Answer one, don't know. Answer two, yes, fully. Answer two, partially, but for driver activities only. And answer four, partially, but for vehicle maintenance only. Vote now. Yes, again, very interesting and something that uh, we'll take away and uh, it'll help us to progress this pilot uh, very much. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. And there's been a landslide of questions. How many fleets with a thousand trucks have you consulted with or is it aimed at small fleets only? It's aimed at all fleet sizes. Um, it was interesting, the survey that we did earlier in the year, um, the, the positive responses 
lots of positive responses came from bigger fleets, they did. Uh, but we did get positive responses from medium sized and smaller fleets as well. But uh, it's aimed at all to answer the question. Okay. Very, very, very significant question here. If you're a member of the scheme, will it exclude you from roadside checks? Yes. Um, but there is um, hesitant in that only because the DFT conduct random surveys annually and these annual surveys must bring in everyone but as a matter of course you will be excluded from roadside checks yes great okay I mean tons and tons and they're still coming in Gordon so look if you really want to talk to Gordon you're going to be here yeah uh, I advise you do and we will print all these these questions and answers later Gordon thank you very much indeed thank you very much thank you.